Hey everybody, Dustin here. Thanks for checking another video. So since ChatGPT came out, I've been I've had this idea rattling around in my head for a new side project. I mean, I've had the idea for a while, but since ChatGPT came out, it's basically given me this glimmer of hope that there's a brain for for myself for the future. And that's essentially what I want to do. This decades-long project I'm kind of endeavoring to go down that I'm going to discuss right now, the plan for, which is essentially to live on through AI is my hope. And I think we're, we're going to get there, I hope, obviously. And yeah, let's just get into the plan. Let's get into the, why I believe this is possible. So this is ChatGPT, first of all. You, you all. We all know and love it. I've made a couple videos of it, one or two or, or seven or something like that. And before I get into the details, I want to just show right off the start here, just to kind of give it a little show off of what I've seen. Like I've had it make some movie scripts. I've had it make a ton of things. And recently I've had the idea like, okay, let's just start giving it my data and see what happens. So here's a prompt I have an idea for. Basically, I'm going to give, uh, here's my prompt that I'm asking it. I'm going to give you my last two blog posts and I want you to write the next one as if I wrote it. So the last two ones, my titles are interesting times at this date and I'm back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my website, dustinbrett.com. I'll open up my blog post. I'm going to sort here by date just to make sure I'm right about that. So I'll open up interesting times. I'm going to switch to edit just so I can copy it. Now we'll go in here and I'll paste this one in. That's the first one. And then we're going to make room for the second one here. We'll go to the second one here, the I'm back. Same thing, copy it. Sadly, it doesn't copy the images. It'd be cool if it made the images. I mean, that's what we're talking about in a minute, but let's get there. So I paste the second blog. So I'm going to give it two blog posts, just two. Um, the reason I'm only giving it two is it has this a token limitation, basically, which we'll get into about the API. And we'll also get into how in the future I want to run this locally and how we need to run it locally so that I, I can train it. And if I want to give it however much I can, but essentially this all would be trained. So I wouldn't just be on the spot giving it blog posts necessarily. I would bulk give it all. But let's just see. It's already written a ton of stuff. So it's got a title for the next one, In the Loop. That's a cool title. I like it already. It's hard to believe that another year has come and gone, and even harder to believe that it's been three years since my last blog post. Well, that's not true, because I just said I posted one in 2022, so it kind of screwed up a little bit right off the start. But okay, let's tweak that. I mean, as a starter, this is a heck of a lot better than like autocorrect or Gmail giving you the first sentence. I mean, this wrote the entire blog post for me. Imagine if I'd given it all my blog posts, and once it gets three generations better, so it's not saying I haven't written something in three years. One of my posts, I basically wrote that, so it's decided to copy on that. Um, one of the biggest events in my life since my last post has been the arrival of my third child, David. Oh, wow. that's a, I don't know about that. I should ask my wife about that one. That's funny. Uh, but you can run these through all day. And it gave me another one last time where it said we got a cat. Uh, I've been, I ran one ahead of time just in case. But these are really fun. Uh, in terms of career, I've been working at Microsoft for over a year now. That's true. That's a cool one because in my last post, I said I basically just started, I think. It'd be interesting if it just made that up and it turned out to be true and I didn't even mention Microsoft in my last post. Anyways, it's like there's the example right there. So ChatGPT can talk like me with just two posts. That Some of that sounds a bit like me. Like if I just posted that, most people that read my blog would be like, okay, that's legit. So there's an example just to kind of get everybody about the idea. Imagine locally running this and having my own one. Uh, so this is my side project, by the way, that was running those blog posts, but we're not going to talk about that today. So let's get into what I was talking about, about costs and stuff, the, how much it would be. So Microsoft essentially allows access to open APIs, open AI's API. It's not open API, but it is open AI, whatever the word open means in that context. Uh, so you can get it from them or you can get it from Microsoft, I believe. The cool thing about their Microsoft one is they have this price estimator, so you can kind of get an idea for how it will go. And the fine-tuned one is a key piece actually here is that I would want to fine-tune it. Uh, I would want to have training, hosting, that kind of thing. So essentially these costs will bloom very fast. Let's say I wanted to train it for 80 hours. Uh, that's $1,600. So obviously that's not realistic. Um, I mean, I would say none of this is realistic at this point. That's why I'm talking about this is a decades-long project. Uh, one point to that is GPT-2 was released. GPT-3 probably won't be, but let's say 10 generations from now when we're at GPT-10, maybe they'll just give us GPT-7 and that will still be more than enough to run dust and brain beta 0.9, you know, and then eventually it can just run on its own and it can do its own upgrades is my hope. 
Um, so the costs are, are pretty high. I mean, if you don't fine-tune it, there's also this concept of tokens, which I've kind of understood to be, it's not like letters, it's not necessarily words. It most of the time can be words, but it's almost these representations within matrices or something like that, that it's all been tokenized. I, I think I'm doing that completely wrong. That's another thing where it's going to take me decades to learn the AI of all this. But you can see from the cost here, this actually isn't so bad. Like, if I want to do, that's a ton of tokens right there. There's only four bucks, and that's like... 9999 times a thousand tokens so i think that could be all my blog posts if i were to just dump that as one message or try to i mean that's another thing you can do with chat gpt is i could say i'm going to give you all my blog posts consecutively because you can't just dump it all in one message but you can kind of build a lot of context but i think there might actually be a limit to the amount of context you can have per conversation even uh so again it gets me pushing to wanting to figure out could I use the APIs? Do I want to run it locally? In the end, I want to run it locally one day because I love the idea of hosting my own brain. I mean, I guess it's uh, kind of putting all my eggs in one basket. So at some point it might move to the internet and the cloud. Uh, but I'm still putting my eggs in some baskets anyways. And you can see from the the API here, they go into a bit of detail on it in OpenAI site and I get a bit more understanding for some of the token ideas and this DaVinci 3 one is kind of one of their similar chat GPT ones. If you go into the details here, they do say that the the chat the GPT 3.5 is kind of this DaVinci one, uh, DaVinci 3, but it's not the same as chat GPT. I've kind of read into it a bit more, and there's also this instruct GPT that helped build chat GPT or train it, I think. Uh, and I, I'm not doing it justice, but essentially there isn't access to chat GPT exactly here. But you can kind of see that the level of parameters, like 175 billion for the DaVinci one, that I believe is on par with what ChatGPT has. Perhaps it even has less. Um, and that's where we're going to have optimizations in the future so we can get better at running this. Uh, I mean, these are some open source ones, like a GPT Neo X, GPT J. These are ones you could run. Here's like a 20 billion parameter one. Uh, but these are going to need some pretty beefy cards, pretty beefy. I mean, that's another problem right now that I want to get into and it's actually talked about here in this one hugging face article it's actually a cool website where they run a lot of uh, models and AI stuff but they get into like the how these transformers have kind of been built and some of the ones here with the big parameters like 176 billion that's close to the, the GPT one as well as they mention here uh, the bloom one and this palm one is the Google one which is looks like four times bigger and I believe GPT-4 is also going to be maybe double palm size. I'm not sure exactly. Or maybe even quadruple. Who knows? I mean, that's essentially what they're doing right now. And I've watched a few videos where they essentially have been saying the curve currently is just like going up for giving data. There's no there's no point where it's leveled off. So they're just going to keep throwing data at it until it stops essentially getting better at everything. Um, and I'm hoping at that point we'll, we'll get more open source. Like I say, how, how things like this GPT-Neo has been open source. And I believe some of this is based on gpt 2 and there might even be some access to some GPT-3 stuff, but it's not the same thing as the chat GPT-1. It's not trained the same way. And maybe we're 20, 30 years from being able to run this at home. I don't think so, though. Like, with all this stuff, it's always like, oh, with today's technology, if it, it went at that speed, it would take 20 years. But there's just so many breakthroughs happening now that who's to say in 20 years, like, that could run on my phone. I could run my brain or something like that. As an example here, though, and they talk about it in the article here, these A100 cards, these are essentially the beefiest of the beefy right now. They have 80 gigabytes of RAM on them. And a lot of these models essentially need the graphics card memory, which is an unfortunate limitation at the moment. I would love if it could use system memory because I can get 512 gigabytes of system memory for, I don't know, let's say $2,000. I think it's less than that. Whereas this card here with 80 gigabytes of memory is... Here it's $24,000, it says. Uh, on this page here, I think they mentioned it being around 15000 But maybe since uh, all this chat GPT stuff has come out, I'm imagining the price has kind of increased. So this isn't realistic. But hey, let's say one day that I become a, a bazillionaire, uh, Elon Musk style or whatever you got for money. This would be a cool little side endeavor. It's like, I'm going to start my own little server farm and build my own brain. Maybe that's what he's doing. I mean, he invested in OpenAI. Maybe that's his plan there. Who knows? But that's kind of a cool idea for it. Um, so that's the brain part of it. That's kind of what I was thinking with ChatGPT for the brain. But but there's a lot of other pieces to it that I've kind of thought about for a while that I wanted to get into. And that's where I kind of think of like the body of the AI. Uh, and so the first part of the body that I, I've been thinking of is like is, is like the speech to text, basically. So I say something and I it has to be converted to text so that it can go into these language models. So there's already something in the browser called speech recognition. It's a web API. Uh, it's okay at best, and it's just built into some browsers, not all of them. 
So this is kind of one option. This is like the basic option that is already kind of in the horizon right now, essentially. Uh, but looking into the future, there's this like something like another open AI product here is something called Whisper. And essentially, I watched a video where they talked about training Whisper, and they were surprised at like how well it's done with how simple it is. And an interesting thing about how simple it is is that it's it's open. This one has basically been open sourced, and there's this really cool use case here where somebody made it in WebAssembly where they can run OpenAI's Whisper in the browser client side, not on a server even. Like I'm talking about making a server finally. Most of my projects have been client side, but this even could be client side. This is running GPT two and Whisper in Wasm. So it's like, I'm not gonna get into this demo necessarily, but it's pretty cool where like, you can download the Whisper model, you can download the GPT-2 model, and you just start talking. It like reads it with Whisper, converts it to text, sends it to the language model, and then it spits it out and it also can do speaking it in audio. And that gets into the next piece that I was interested in. And for the speaking part, all that they've decided to do is use the Web Speech API, which is another web API for doing, um, this is the text-to-speech part. It's like the other side of it. Speech-to-text, text-to-speech. So now like the computer's already created some kind of text, you wanna hear it. So this is neat, but it's very limited. Uh, going to the future, things I would like, if I have a backend, I mean, if I've got a backend, a server where I can do whatever I want and send it back to my client, then it's like, okay, the sky's the limit. But then I need the money for the server and stuff or whatever, however I decide to run it. Um, but I'm comfortable to build it and glue all the software together. I think that'll be fun. So here's an example of a really cool one where that's like cutting edge for now, this thing called real-time voice cloning is an open source one where it only needs a few seconds of audio. This seems counterintuitive to me. I'm fine to give it, I've got hundreds of hours of me doing YouTube stuff where I'd be like, okay, let's feed it that. But some of the examples and stuff that they have talked about for this essentially makes it sound like, basically what I'm talking about, what this is, is I want the computer to sound like me. That's the next other step. So I can give it all this audio and with this tool, this real-time voice, voice cloning, essentially it will be able to copy my voice. So then it'll sound like me. So that's, so the speech to text is the ears. The text to speech is like the mouth. Uh, this is another text to speech one uh, that's also pretty interesting. They're also moving into some deep, deeper AI stuff as well. And they're getting to the point where they're making these AI voices and also cloning voices. But voice cloning is pretty far along, I think. I haven't figured it out yet. Again, I need to get more into AI, but I want to clone my voice. That's a really cool idea. All of this is going to go on my website too, my Daedalus OS. We'll get into that in a little bit, but I have some ideas for how this will live within my desktop environment, my last side project. That's going to continue anyways. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the mouth. Next one is the eyes. So what is eyes? Eyes is image to text. Not to, Yeah, image to text, right? So there's something for that too. Again, OpenAI has this thing called Clip which essentially is almost like the reverse of the Dolly, which we'll get into in a second, where, where you can have it make pictures. You can now give it pictures and it can essentially classify them. So this will be another thing where my, if you go to my website and I had this, I could just say, hey, give me the camera. And then I could start sending frames and just be classifying stuff. And that could be fed into the language model, but into the brain. And there'd be all these loops of how things would be fed in. And that's where I think I could do some cool glue code where it's like, I know how my brain works, where it's like, oh, I saw this and then I thought about that. I can write that as code, but I need the neural nets and stuff to kind of give me some kind of language to connect those things. Cause it's like, I'm not gonna be able to interpret what the picture is or what you said, but if the computer can kind of summarize that to me in a way where I can like turn it into switches or if else's and I can send it to other AIs, great. That's what I want to do. Um, as you can see here, you send a picture here. It's a television studio. So it knows really good stuff. Guacamole. Is that even like, this is better than I would do some of these things. Airplane or person. What does that mean? A photo of an airplane. Okay. Anyways, the, this is like really good. So that's like a really cool one. Next one is, is the body. I want to have the body part. So this is an amazing one I saw from Facebook that they recently had called this pixel codec avatars. Uh, this is still work in progress. They got a cool paper for it. But it, like one of the video demos I saw, basically just someone with their phone took like click, 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 like four pictures. And then it almost looked like them. Like, and then it was, the, it was an AI representation, but it was almost like wearing a face, wearing their face, but in such a good way where it was like, oh, wow. Like what if it had had really good images? Like I'd be happy to buy some kind of super capture rig if I could immortalize my face forever in that way and make it part of this avatar brain thing that I'm working on. So that's like another 
avenue I have to go down at some point. I mean, this one's not open source, but there's other ones that are kind of open source. Uh, one example for that here is like this one here. Someone, sc this guy scanned in his face. I don't know who this is, but this is just a cool example. Like, what if that were my face? You know, it's not, but somebody scanned this in. So like, imagine that's the face. And then like, I have this other model viewer here thing for this little astronaut. And I actually have a little code example here where if I open up my code, I can put that astronaut on my web page here. So we'll put him on here. So he's basically on here. So imagine this thing can move around. He looks like me like that. And then plus all the back end is all this AI stuff. It's pretty crazy. Uh, and then just to give it a little more brain, there's a little more stuff we can do, which I'm calling the hands, essentially, the ability to make stuff other than talk about it, which is the language thing. I guess that's the ability to speak. But this is the... There's two other aspects, text to image and text to code. So text to image, Dolly, I've, I've made a few videos about it where you just say some stuff and it makes pictures. That's the thing where we'd be able to have a conversation with, my, with pretend me and pretend me could make pictures. And maybe one day, I, maybe I'll start doing drawings and sending those to the thing and say, this is my style. Just like how Dolly can make things like a Monet or something. I could do my style. Like it doesn't have to be good. I just want it to look like something I made basically. Uh, and then for code, I don't even know if I want it to look like something I made. I'm happy if it, it can code better than I can code. Um, oh wait, uh, just on one more on the image side of it. There's also this thing called stable diffusion, which is already an open source one that you can run locally, which I've actually had some almost better results than Dali in some things. Um, so that's another example where it can run locally. That's again, where I'm saying all this stuff is some, a lot of this stuff can be run locally in bad, bad versions right now, but bad, you know, like 20 years ago, these would be insane. So 20 years from now what will be considered bad. I would love to have that, I feel like, hopefully. Hopefully it's, I'm being optimistic maybe. 20 years seems like a long time scale. I don't hear a lot of people talk that way. So, uh, and then just one more, the, this thing, uh, OpenAI Codex. This is for making the code. Again, ChatGPT can do this. I've, ha I've done videos where I ask it to make things and it can code, uh, but it's getting better and better. And this again, I, this, I don't think there's an open source solution for this right now. Copilot is another one that can kind of do this. But this is something I'd like my bot to be able to do is if we're talking about stuff, maybe it could code something or it could be a teacher in that way. So anyways, that's my idea for how I want to immortalize myself and have a AI afterlife essentially. So if you like this video, please throw me a like. If you want to motivate me, support me, that kind of thing, please subscribe. And thanks for checking out this video. See you in the next one. Goodbye.